Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church virtual worship. We're so glad to have all of you with us today, and we pray that this time of worship will be a renewal and a time of hope for you as we gather together on this third Sunday of Easter. We hope you will continue to take advantage of our devotionals that are being released on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and follow us on our Washington Street Facebook page at wsmethodist.org so that you can see and learn all the things that are happening here, even in the midst of a pandemic. So now, if you would, please take your worship guide and join me in our greeting for the day. Followers of Jesus, the tomb is empty. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. The, the Lord is risen. risen indeed. Let us rejoice in the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. prayer found printed in your worship guide. Let us pray. Almighty God, Jesus, our risen Lord, who was made known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our hearts that we may recognize his presence and with his disciples cry, the Lord has risen indeed. Through Christ who lives and reigns with you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Join me now at the intersection of Washington and Marion Street, a familiar place to most of you, for the reading of the Gospel. Hear now these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, as we join Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place within these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? 
Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come join me as we walk with Cleopas and his friend to a village called Emmaus. When one is lost, every intersection is significant. On the Sunday after the crucifixion, the followers of Jesus were lost. The Passover had ended, the Sabbath had come to a close, and before they could even ask, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? The women had come from the tomb and told them an astounding message. The tomb is empty. And angels had appeared to them and declared that he is alive, alive. Luke's gospel is the only gospel that makes this report. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. The followers of Jesus were at an intersection. How does one interpret such a message? As dawn moved in today, Cleopas and his companion left Jerusalem for a village whose exact location is unknown. They were walking down a road of uncertainty, bumping up against that place where faith and reality meet and cause us to ask questions. How do I go from here? Where do I go from here? How do we get back to life before Jesus? How does one even think about normal after one has followed the man they thought was a Messiah? Is Emmaus our destiny? What will we discover when we get there? I bet they were wondering how their family and their friends would react to men who had followed a crucified Messiah. I suppose they even were concerned about whether or not they'd have a job when they got home. Maybe they were even asking questions like, how will life be different? Now that we left behind all that had happened in Jerusalem. As they walked, talking about Jesus, pondering these things, a shroud of uncertainty fell over them. And it seemed that even though they were traveling a familiar road, that all of a sudden, every intersection seemed uncertain. And this is where our story intersects with the gospel story today, at the point of uncertainty. Uncertainty about the future is what most of us are feeling these days. When, when will we get back to work? And if we are at work, when will work get back to normal? 
when will we be able to see our children engaged in their normal activities, even if it's not going to school? And what about church? When will we be able to come to church again and see one another and greet one another in the name of Christ? When will we be able to gather in our Sunday school classes in our three hall for a covered dish lunch? How long will it be before we actually get to sing the doxology together? I want to know a very important question too. When will I be able to go to the grocery store confident that I'll be able to buy toilet paper? How about you? Like Cleophas and his companions, we're not exactly sure what the future holds. What we do know is that we're just taking it one day at a time, living into this virtual life, loving one another, missing one another, and longing for a life that feels comfortable and familiar. But what this story teaches us is that wherever we are on the road to uncertainty, Jesus comes and walks with us. Jesus comes to walk with us and make sense of our uncertainty. Even as we approach the most challenging intersections of our lives. Many of us will remember the lyrical writing footprints. You remember the story? I think someone was telling the story as if they had passed over and were having a conversation with God. And as they look back on their life, they saw all through their lives two sets of footprints. And then surprisingly, there was a place where there was only one set of footprints. And the individual turned to the Lord and said, where were you, Lord? That was when I was having my most difficult time. My spouse had passed, and all I could think about was how lonely I was, how desperate I was. There's only one set of footprints, Lord. Where were you? And the Lord answered, that was when I was carrying you. Jesus comes to us in the midst of uncertainty to walk with us and to make sense of the things that we cannot understand. In those moments, Jesus comes to us just as he joined Cleopas and his friend, and he teaches us through the power of the Holy Spirit that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Even on the road to uncertainty, we are not alone. If we invite Jesus to stay with us, he will. He said, I will not leave you orphaned. If we ask him, he will remain with us, just as he stayed with Cleopas and his friend, those sojourners to Emmaus. Now, there is an interesting and subtle twist to this story. Jesus inv is invited to stay with his fellow travelers. He is their guest. Yet, when they go to the table, Jesus assumes the role of a host. Jesus takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks the bread. And he gives them the bread. If we invite Jesus to stay with us, he will be the host of our lives. Think about that for a moment. He will be the host of our lives. John talks about that unique relationship as Christ abiding in us and us abiding in Christ. If we invite Jesus to stay with us, 
if he abides in us and we abide in him, he will be our means of grace. He will be the host through whom God pours out God's grace upon our lives. As further assurance, Jesus told his disciples, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Even on the road of uncertainty, we are not alone. Jesus comes to us. Jesus teaches us. And in Christ, God makes God's home with us. Even when we are struggling to understand the uncertainties of the future, when we travel with Jesus, when we listen to his teaching, when we invite him to stay with us, and when we allow him to join us in all of our everyday, ordinary activities, he reveals himself to us so that once again, we can stand with faith and boldly declare the good news of Easter. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. In Christ, there is life now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. And now let us join our hearts in the prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayers. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the great 50 days of Easter, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For pastors, teachers, and ministers, that they recognize the risen Christ in word and sacrament and lead your church with wisdom, humility, and courage. God of resurrection, hear our prayer for the governments of the world and its leaders that they may resist the corruption of sin and serve the common good god of resurrection hear our prayer for our planet earth that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance god of resurrection hear our prayer for the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge and hope, and that the church may offer the hospitality the first disciples offered to Jesus on the road to Emmaus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and share in our resources. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that they may receive good things and that we, your servants, not return evil for evil. God of resurrection, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. And now let us join in the historic prayer that Jesus said with his first disciples. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Although we are right now traveling an uncertain road, we can be sure of this. Jesus, the risen Christ, comes to us. And if we invite him, he will stay with us. And God will make God's home with us. Therefore, we can face even an uncertain future with hope. Alleluia. Amen.